Hi, freut mich, dass du da. Hi, freut mich, dass du da bist. Dario hier. Ich habe heute ein besonders cooles Interview für dich parat, nämlich mit Josh Dueck, dem Sieger der Paralympischen Winterspiele 2014 in Sochi im Abfahrtsskilauf. Er ist der Erste, der es geschafft hat, einen Backflip mit Sitzschieren zu machen. Und ich wünsche dir jetzt viel Spaß bei dem Interview. Thanks for being here in my interview, Josh. Um, yes, can you please explain my viewers what are you currently doing for a living? Right now, I'm in between careers at the age of 36. Mm -hmm. After nearly 20 years dedicated to sport, Uh, I decided to take retirement in 2014 mm -hmm. and refocus my energy on family. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I, we have two kids. Our oldest daughter, she is three, and we had a son uh, two and a half months ago. So a lot of our energy is just being directed towards getting used to this giant transition in our life, which is moving from the reality of an athlete, which is very self-serving and very focused on my progression and development to uh -huh. a parent which is selfless you know we live to serve our children right now so that's where the most of our energy has been applied um like you dario i am a young entrepreneur and an adventurer and traveler uh -huh. and we are working on a bunch of different plans right now which uh, include doing something special to celebrate canada's 150th anniversary this summer which mm -hmm. will look a little bit like us moving into our Airstream travel trailer and touring across the country, celebrating, sharing, connecting our stories with other Canadians and learning their stories as well and capturing the beauty of what our country has to offer. Sweet. At the same time, we will be promoting and, and sharing our foundation, which is a combination of two right now, One is the High Fives Foundation based out of Truckee, California. Mm -hmm. The other is the Live It, Love It Foundation based out of Revelstoke, British Columbia. So uh, together, both of those foundations, if you were to describe them in a nutshell, is empowerment through adventure, targeting individuals that have had a traumatic injury in their life and helping them get back on their feet, so to speak, and return to adventure, return to a life that they once knew and perhaps um, allow them to grow even more through their injury or their disability. That's cool. Congrats. So that's one project, you know, family's yeah. one, doing something to celebrate Canada and promote foundation is another. And the uh, primary focus for work, if you will, for me is storytelling. So motivational speaking. Mm -hmm. and sharing some of the experiences that I've had or learned from through my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, can you please explain how you got into sport, into the athlete um, living? I was active as a young child playing football. I think in North America we call it soccer, but uh, I played football from the age of five until I was 17. Mm -hmm. And the big sport for me, which I played for most of my life, is downhill skiing, which I started when I was 13 and continued till just recently when I was 36. Wait, I'm 36 now. I retired two years ago, 34. <laughs> so for 21 years, I dedicated my life to the sport of skiing started out in freestyle mm -hmm. and evolved into coaching after several years of pursuing my goal to represent Canada as a professional skier and one day maybe as an Olympian. Um, I was forced into retirement from freestyle skiing due to financial constraint. I just couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So then that's how I got into coaching as I wanted to stay involved in the sport and uh, pay off some of the debt that I had incurred turned out I really love coaching, um, working with the kids and sharing my passion for the sport and my love of the mountains uh, felt very natural. So I got into coaching as much as I could. It was only two years into my career that I sustained a spinal cord injury mm -hmm. while demonstrating a jump that went tragically wrong. Okay. Um, can, 
which jump was it? The double backflip? Uh, the the no, the first backflip in a wheelchair? No, the injury that left me, or let's say. The accident that left me with a spinal cord injury happened in 2004 and oh, okay. was a result of over-rotating a front flip and overshooting the landing hill. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that leads me to the next question. Um, in general, how do you overcome injuries or a backslap, which you get always in life? Mm. Well, in my story, I had the great fortune of a few things that happened early on, mm -hmm. right after the injury. The first was on the way to the hospital, I just had this thought or a feeling that everything happens for a reason. Everything in life had prepared me for this moment and uh, nothing was going to happen to me that I wasn't strong enough to deal with. And I just kept replaying this message in my brain. Mm -hmm. When I arrived to the hospital, the doctors had done an x-ray and noticed that I had dislocated my back and severed my spinal cord, which would leave me paralyzed from the waist down mm -hmm. and a wheelchair user. Uh, the doctor looked at me, though, and this was the fascinating part. He looked at me and said, you're going to rock the world from a wheelchair. And before you know it, we'll have you back in the mountains riding a sit ski with all your friends. <laughs> and in a very dark moment, he'd give me hope. And we all know that hope is a powerful tool in creating change. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the first things that really shifted after my accident. And just a few short days later, after surgery, the first person to come visit me in the hospital, other than my parents, was this girl. Her name's Lacey, and she was the one that got away. I had pursued her vigorously for months, and the path that I was on was self-destructive, and she wasn't really interested in being in a relationship with that kind of guy. But when she heard about my accident, she had quit her job, bought a one-way bus ticket, came to Vancouver to see me in the hospital, and one week later, I had asked her to be my girlfriend, this time successfully. <laughs> And well, five years later, I uh, asked her to be my wife, and she said yes. And in my opinion, that's probably the greatest accomplishment of my life is convincing her to marry me. <laughs> and uh, now, you know, 13 years after my accident, we have two children and have many stories and experiences that we've shared together and grown together. So those, for me, are some of the big turning points that help me to Embrace adversity, embrace the challenging times in life. Hope and love mm -hmm. have been so influential in, in our life, in my life, and allowed me to do a lot of great things, right? After my accident, I continued skiing. Mm -hmm. And a few years later, I had skied for Canada in the 2010 Paralympic Winter Games. And I had a, a personal best performance where I finished second place behind Germany's very own Martin Braxenthaler, who <laughs> refers to himself as the monoski Führer. And for good reason. He, is, um, he was one of the finest monoskiers on the planet when he was still competing. Mm -hmm. So huge, you know. Um, in a very short window, I went from being in the hospital to skiing for my country at the highest level. And uh, a few years later, I got into free skiing and backcountry. And you can find that on YouTube if you search the Freedom Chair or Sit Ski Backflip. You can see those videos of what that looked like for me. And then I again had a chance to compete for Canada at the Paralympics in Sochi 2014 and had even greater success than I did in Vancouver. And perhaps it was because of that, achieving the goals that I had set, that it felt natural for me to retire from sport after 21 years and focus on family and then reinvent myself. You know, like I said earlier, I'm a young guy, I'm 36, and I have an opportunity to start a new career and a new path. And it definitely is going to be in alignment with what I've learned and uh, taken from sport and to be able to give that back and share that through foundation work, adventure, travel, and promoting all the great things that 
we have in this lifetime to enjoy and that we should. That's really impressive in, the, in just such a short um, time span to make this development. Is this also your um, most important life lesson you've learned that you have to reinvent you, yourself from time to time? I think that is an important lesson, absolutely. Mm -hmm. One of the, the most important lessons that I've drawn from sport, and there are a few, but I had won gold in Sochi. I've been named Canada's flag bearer during the closing ceremonies, which is the highest honor an athlete can receive. Uh, I've won many awards in, in my career. Mm -hmm. And the awards don't mean a lot. They don't make me feel any better. They don't make me think that I'm a better person. They're, in a way, empty. Mm -hmm. What I have learned is it's the pursuit It was the joy of competing. It was the joy of setting goals. It was the experience of travel and the friends that I made all around the world. That's, that's what it was about. It was never about winning. Even though it's good to have the goal and it's incredibly fortunate to have achieved the goals that I'd set. Mm -hmm. But really what I miss and what meant the most to me was the process was setting the goals that's cool so basically setting the pros the goals um, is the most important thing for you for me yes yeah okay good um, and if someone wants to chase his goal or his dream um, what what would you recommend to him or her what would the first first thing to do write it down mm -hmm. I find goals are so much easier to manifest when they're written down and you can see them in front of you and that is such a powerful action in in fulfilling the intention that you've set for yourself is to look at it to even talk about it because when I talk about it and I share it with you I've created a sense of accountability that I am mm -hmm. truly working towards this that I've taken the first step And then have fun with it, right? Life is short. I think we all know that. And it's important that we take full advantage of the opportunities that we're given. And if you have the opportunity to set goals and do something that you love, then it's a, a nice blend of taking it seriously. And when I say that, I mean really staying focused on the task and doing everything in your power to be the best that you can be at whatever it is you're doing. And then also have fun with it. Be playful because what's the point in taking anything too seriously? You know, and in and, and sport, for example, things can go your way and you can find great success. And I've witnessed athletes and friends of mine put everything into it and not achieve their goals for one reason or the other. It could be injury, it could be poor weather, it could be uh, so many different reasons that they might not have achieved the goal they set. And if, if there's too much focus on the outcome and they become too serious, then everything in the process gets lost. The journey, and it's so cliche, you know, it is about the journey. It's not about the destination. And no matter how many times you hear it, it sounds cliche. Uh, <laughs> but perhaps one of the most important lessons that I've drawn from sport is just that. Mm -hmm. Work hard, stay focused. Clearly, I'm trying to stay focused on my phone right now. Come on. Make a balance so that I can see well. You know what I'm going to do? It's this. We'll just change it up. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, that works fine. So Great. is that also your suggestion um, when you are facing a problem while you're chasing your dream or your goal? That's a great comment. That's a great question. Yeah, I think it is very important in any aspect of life is to fully embrace the process. And if you can enjoy the journey, whether it's recovering from a disability or pursuing your dreams as an adventurer, a traveler, or an athlete, or something that you do for work, I think if you can be present to the moment 
mm-hmm. engage fully your capacity to what you're doing and the work that you're you're applying yourself to, then I think great joy comes from that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Taking pride in your work is so important, whether you love the task or not, because it is an expression of who you are, and it's how you'll be remembered. Thanks. That's really impressive. I think a lot of people can use this to hear to hear it from someone. You see it, or you can read it in, in a lot of books, but I think it's different to hear it from a guy like you who have who has accomplished so much, like the the wins in the Olympic Games. So yes, um, that was the last question of my interview. Um, thanks again. You're welcome, Dario, and I hope that when you come and you tour Canada and you make your return to Revelstoke that you'll call me, let me know that you're around. It would be great to travel, explore, and spend some time with you. Yes, of course, I will send you a message. Great.